Hi everyone, Sajid Amit here and welcome to what is likely going to be my final video on the atrium close. So I will drop a link to my first impressions video that I released a bit of time ago, not too long ago. Um, and I've had more time with the atrium closed. I've dropped impressions on social media, on the HeadFi atrium closed thread, also the water cooler thread on HeadFi. And you know my views on it, so they haven't changed. I'll just quickly, what I'll first do in this video is I'll summarize what I think about this by drawing comparisons to the other headphones on the ZMF lineup. Uh, I will talk a bit about, you know, its aesthetics, build and comfort and all that, what it works really well with. Uh, and I'll be finishing this. The second part of this is gonna be, I hope, interesting for you because it's gonna be interesting for me. I'm gonna do like a live shootout with the Focal Stelia, a live shootout, not in the sense that I'm streaming this live, I'm not. In the sense that I'm gonna be A-Bing this in front of you of two different sources or source chains with and give you my impressions because this is $3,000, this is $2,700. Of course, that is the price of the limited edition Italian olive which I have. So this is more expensive even if you buy the limited edition. But I think it's a fair shootout because a lot of people have preferred the VC over the Stelia and vice versa. And this does hold its own against the VC and then some. And even if you buy the stock version, which is much cheaper than the Stelia, I do think a comparison is warranted because this was for a while something that people liked. I do, I do think that this is now very cheap in the secondary market and perhaps it doesn't have the same level of fame or attraction as it used to, but a lot of people still own it. And I've been requested to do this AB and hence this AB is gonna be done in a sort of a live fashion with two different source chains because I do want to drive home the point that sources can make, a, make or break a difference to your listening pleasure, sources matter. I mean, I've had IMs and headphones which I did not like of certain sources and I would have sold but then they were rescued by other sources So that's the extent to which I think sources can matter at this sort of level Okay, I will firstly first quickly talk about what this is. This is the atrium Closed which sounds similar to the atrium open But it is a departure from the atrium open and the atrium headphones themselves are a departure from the Verite headphones um very quickly on how these are different. And the Verite headphones are both, the open and the closed, are based or used, are made using beryllium drivers, which have a fast sort of transient. That being said, because of how ZMF dampens their headphones, their mastery over the craft and engineering with regard to how they present timbre, how well they do bass and the ZMF mid-range is of course world famous. The Verite headphones still have nice decay. They're faster, they snap here in the atrium headphones. But that is not the only difference. I think a lot of the difference also comes down to how they're tuned. The atrium headphones have a slightly more harmonious tuning. The atrium open DMS correctly pointed out is the sort of headphone that you would love if you had the 6, 6XX or the HD 650 and you loved it. The Atrium Open is like the flagship version of the HD 650 with some important differences, of course. So the Atrium Closed, just like the Atrium Open, has more pin again. So there's more clarity in the upper mids, which does make it slightly more well-rounded, I think. They also have biocellulose drivers. Biocellulose drivers generally have more decay and a sort of natural sense of start and stop of sound and music, which I, I think lends to sort of this um, sense of linger and note decay and even note weight that I personally love. So the weight comes from the fact that there's more linger and the dampening system, the atrium dampening system do give both these headphones a lot of note weight without giving them any sort of mid-bass bump. The Verite Closed and the Open do have a lot of mid-bass warmth. I'm not gonna call it a mid-bass bump, uh, but they are more mid bassy headphones. The nodal point of the Atrium Closed in particular, in terms of the bass frequencies, is much lower. It's at 50 hertz. Whereas with Verite Closed, it's around 120 hertz. So while the Verite Closed benefits a lot from that mid-bass warmth, 
This is decidedly more sub bassy than the atrium open and certainly more sub bassy than the Verite closed. So if you fancy a headphone that is very sub bass oriented while having mid bass clarity and a lovely amount of air frequencies, in terms of how it graphs, it does have more air, air frequencies than even the atrium open and more than the Verite closed. So that's how, what it sounds like. A technical performance, I feel honestly, are pretty equal across the atrium open and the Verite closed with certain parts of the frequency sounding more resolving on these three headphones, depending on the frequency response. Because if you have a frequency that is more present, you might perceive more resolution in that part of the frequency, right? Okay. And Tamri, I think they're all more or less on par. The only ZMF headphone that I feel like is the most resolving of this entire bunch, regardless of whether you're comparing the Verite headphones or the Atrium headphones, is the Caldera. The Caldera is a beast in terms of resolution and all that, right? It's a planar headphone and it's just, it's just amazing. Okay. So you have a sense of a sonic profile. This is a much harder wood than the cherry wood, which is a softer wood, which is the sort of the stock that you can buy right now from the ZMF website. This is just stunning. I love its coloration and I love the wood grains. I don't find this particularly heavy and I'm someone who struggles with weight of headphones. This is by, this by the way is my personal unit. So I bought this so I can spend longer with this to understand it and talk about it. I don't keep headphones anymore. I'm more into IM because of my neck pains, which are resolving thankfully. But that said, I did buy this. And, and so the wood is a slightly harder kind of wood, which means that it does have more impact, which I love. Uh, the Caldera pads are here, the perforated pads. So the way the atrium damping system works, and of course, this is gonna be a layperson's take on the atrium damping system. Do watch the videos by Zach if you wanna understand it better. But I do get a whole lot of newer appreciation about the kind of engineering precision and how much precision Zach brings into his headphones because you on the one hand you have that whole you know lovely warmth from zach and bevan with which they greet the audiophile community with which they interact with the audiophile community the sort of you know uh sort of creative artistic aesthetic heirloom quality of their headphones the wonderful colorways that they come up with for the limited editions and the bravery with which they have tuned the past headphones and now you have something like this which the ads the ads has a different implementation in the closed back atrium closed uh the atrium damping system i mean so just to understand how much precision went into you know the internals whether it is the enclosure and the size of the enclosure within which the damping is happening uh the damper and the distance between the damper and the driver and the distance between the driver the damper rather and the outside of the headphone is all done to such a science, along with this vents here, along with the perforation of these caldera pads. So these are solids inside, but these are perforated here and on the outside. All of which, according to Zach, lends to the airiness and openness because what these in tandem allowed him to do is to help the sound diffuse more gradually instead of having more immediate start and stop. And by that, he was able to sense or recreate the sense of openness, which I definitely love about this headphone. It is a very open sounding headphone, guys, as far as a close back goes, and by far the most open sounding close back I've heard. So kudos to Zach and Bevan for this amazing feat of engineering and technology. Okay, so I will talk a bit about what it sounds like vis-a-vis -vis the Stelia. I'll first use my not so powerful source, which is the Sony WM1 DM2. Sony has a lot of similarities with ZMF. Uh, they do have a very interesting sort of a, a take to audio. Their audiophile division is ancient. Um, it's a very respected Japanese company. People love Sony. I love Sony myself. And um, interestingly, they have a flair for analogish sort of sound profile or sound tuning so the first song i'll play is a love like that by katie malua album number eight and i know it's not the most powerful source and it might not drive our friend the atrium to its fullest atrium close to its fullest potential 
I just want to make a case or make a point about how different sources pair with different headphones and also about power because power is not necessarily the end all be all so I'm at 90 of 120 clicks so I'm at the upper end of the sort of volume spectrum beautiful I do recommend this track if you want to test for female vocals. This is a very languid presentation. Her vocals sound very intimate. And I hear the guitar here. But it doesn't sound like it's coming from the closed space. It sounds pretty free. Very strong center image. Beautiful, beautiful sound. Okay, I'm going to try the Stelia now. So the Stelia, of course, is, you know, was a marvel when it came out, right? Beryllium driver is very resolving for its close back use case. Um, it does over time develop a patina like you can see here, this discoloration, which might bother you or might not. Some people actually like this sort of thing. Uh, this discoloration, I think, is tolerable uh, on the sort of champagne cognac color. But it is a bit bothersome for me on the Focal Clear, which is of a lighter shade. And the Focal Clear does also develop a patina, which is slightly less pleasing. It's slightly more disgusting, I think. But that's just me, perhaps. Okay, I'm going to play this. Turn the volume down a tad. Same song. Easier to drive. No, not that much. Pretty similar. I'm on 84 clicks here and I was at 90 with the atrium closed it's a more direct upfront sound where I'm hearing resolution of the instruments less believe it or not than on the atrium closed I'm hearing the vocals very prominently because this does have very forward vocals it's certainly more mid bassy so my first impression is that this is more fatiguing. This will become more fatiguing for sure. And the timbre isn't, isn't, is not in the same league as the atrium closed. Because now that a lot of the instruments are coming in with this track, I definitely feel that the timbre is um, it's okay. Even on the Sony, which is a master, masterful source for timbre, the Celia is just okay for timbre. Yeah, okay. This is no match for the atrium close when it comes to timbre. Uh, no match whatsoever. It, and the, the way I hear the Celia is that there's a whole lot of mid-bass and then there's a lot of pin again. Uh, uh, so it's not as airy, and, and but it's a nice headphone, no doubt. It is a marvel for when it came out. But the atrium closed is definitely better tuned. I'll just try one more track off a different source. I'll try the Hugo 2 this time. And I use my Sony DAP as a transport, and I do feel like even with transports, and I know this for a fact without having had to measure it, that transports do color the sound because the Hugo 2 sounds more bright without um, the Sony as a transport, right? If I use the Hugo 2 directly from my phone, it does sound brighter. With the Sony as a transport, it does warm up the sound a bit. Uh, one of the annoying things about the Hugo 2 is that it still uses the micro USB uh, uh, cable which I got from Moon Audio a shout out to Moon Audio for the very quick service uh, I use Moon Audio a lot I get no discounts from them but I like their overall tuning the sound profile rather of their cables I find them smoother without being you know warm especially the silver cable which is an interesting sort of a sound okay so I've connected the Hugo 2 to my Sony DAP I have switched on the Hugo 2 which does take you know a minute to get ready uh, I'm using the PW adapter to convert the RCA outs into a 4.4. And the reason I'm doing this is just to play a different track and also give you a sense of whether a different source chain now that I have the Sony WM1ZM2 connected to Hugo 2. So this is a transport. This is the. Uh, yeah, so I just want to talk about how this sounds with a different track. Okay right side is on my right. So 
so I'm not going to play the same song. I'm going to play a different song. Just to give you a different flavor, I'm going to uh, play a heavier track. I'm going to uh, try to play al Alone Again by asking Alexandria. Okay, here goes. So obviously um, a brighter presentation on the Hugo 2, but it's not bright to the point that it's disturbing. The stage is bigger. The Hugo 2 does have a very good stage, very good layering. Very nice, balanced bass on the Hugo 2. It's not as sub bass oriented as I feel like the Sony is. So I do get like an overdose of sub bass with the Sony and I don't mean the word, I don't mean to use the word overdose as a negative word. I love the sub bass that I get from the combination of the atrium closed and the Sony W1ZM2. But the sub bass on the Hugo 2 is phenomenal. It's punching hard, deep. Vocals are very well separated from the amazing sort of drum work happening in this track. The drums are amazing on this track. Huge sound. And the sound stage is also huge. It's very called, you know, cathedral like sort of sound stage. That was uh that was a right. That was an amazing experience, guys. And I feel like yeah, I mean as amazing as it is for a female vocals or male vocals or string instruments, I mean for rock, you do not need to look beyond the atrium closed. Okay, now the Stelia for one more track before I leave you with some parting thoughts on the atrium closed. I'm turning the volume down just a bit on the Hugo 2. So this is green. I, w I had it on sort of like cyan uh, for the Stelia. The treble is not as even or smooth. Sub bass, the sub bass kick is missing on the Celia. And it sounds more cluttered because of the mid bass hump. This is definitely more fatiguing than the atrium closed. Like the rhythm guitars are very in your face and aggressive. More forward vocals. So this does have pin again, but it's not as shouty as this. It's fast though. It's fast, beryllium driver and all. Okay, this is a good headphone for rock and metal, but only if you want to listen to rock and metal in like short spells. This will get fatiguing. It doesn't have the sound stage of the atrium closed either. So just to summarize my views, guys, I've just played two tracks, but of course I've done my ABing in my own time as well. So which one should you buy? So honestly, the Celia is a fantastic headphone. I'm not going to knock it for, you know, being an you know, a bad headphone. It's a fantastic headphone. Um, I did own it. This is, this is the one that I owned. I sold it to a friend who loves it with his Fio M17. The Fio M17, by the way, that he used to own has uh, his battery swollen up and all that. So just, a, a, you know, a note of warning for those of you looking to buy a Fio M17, which is not the objective of this video, but I just thought I'd put it out there. These two headphones are both amazing. If you want sub bass depth and growl the atrium close is a clear winner if for any reason you want a lot of mid bass uh not so much because of the punch but because of you like that sort of fattening up of the frequency response that happens when you have a mid bass hump the cilia does have more of a mid bass hump if you like clarity i think they both have pin again this might graph like it has more pin again however it is sort of balanced out with the insane amount of mid bass this has so it needs that pin again to not sound muddy in terms of clarity, I would say they both sound equally clear. While this does not have the same level of pin again, and that's just good because 
it still has spin again. That's the sort of hallmark of atrium headphones. Treble wise, definitely a very uneven in mid treble and it, you do hear it, it can sound fatiguing and a bit sibilant. This is more air frequency kind of treble, which is where I want my treble to have more energy because it sounds airy and a closed back headphone. If it can be tuned to have this amount of air frequencies, that's all kudos to the guy tuning it. And in this case, Zach, of course, because it sounds airy. Spatially, this is as impressive in layering as this is. So that's worth keeping in mind. Focal headphones do do layering very well. Do you do? And in terms of sound stage, overall grandeur and overall spaciousness, especially images being pinpoint in the sort of soundscape. This is amazing. Now, the f interesting thing that I didn't hope to sort of, that I wasn't thinking would be the case. I do perceive to be, perceive this to be more resolving. Closed backs themselves are not as resolving as open backs. So this is not as resolving as Utopia, for example. But as far as these two are concerned, the atrium close is more resolving. So that's it guys and do sound preferences and this does open up a bit more of a higher powered source like the Hugo 2. It does sound more cathedral like in terms of its spacing and staging. It does resolve more on the Hugo 2 than on the Sony W1 ZM2. So you do get a very different experience from different sources. But does that mean you should always go for the more powerful source? No, because timbrely, timbrely, honestly, Atrium Closed, I feel like, does better on the Sony W and ZM2, which is less powerful. I'm not saying buy this for the Atrium Closed. Do not. Buy something else. This is just to make a case that it's more complex than saying just buy a more powerful source. Different sources have different flavors. So you want to account for flavors, synergy, and also power, and then come to a conclusion. I'm happy to continue the conversation about sources with the Atrium Closed. But honestly, guys, this is a keeper. This is a wonderful headphone. Uh, I don't do headphones anymore. I just bought it so that I just have a longer amount of time to spend with it and formulate an unbiased opinion. This is as unbiased as it gets. If you have a very day closed, I'm not saying sell it, but honestly consider giving this a shot because this in many ways is a better rounded headphone than a very day closed with all due respect and love to the very day closed. This is it guys. This is ZMF's best closed back till date. Sajid Ahmed signing out. Happy to continue the conversation elsewhere. Stay tuned for my next one. Bye-bye.